Hello everyone, welcome to an academy. This is Aksha Raut, your educator. And I'm doing my post-graduation in English Literature from Ramadavi Women's University, Bhuvaneshwar. So this is the course and this is the lesson we are going to do on Coleridge and Supernaturalism. We know Coleridge was famous because of his use of supernatural elements in a very subtle way. So this is the lesson that is going to tell you about his supernatural works. Do not forget to follow me on the academy. I hope you like the lesson. Thank you. Though Coleridge's poetic achievements were small and sometimes fragmentary, yet he remained unequaled in one sphere of poetry, that is the use of supernatural. When planning a new volume of poems to be written jointly by Wordsworth and Coleridge, Coleridge undertook to deal with the supernatural. He wrote in his work Biographia Literaria that it agreed that my endeavors should be directed to persons and characters, supernatural or at least romantic, yet so as to transfer our inward nature of human interest and a semblance of truth sufficient to procure for these shadows of imagination that willing suspension of disbelief for the movement which consists poetic faith. It was with this idea in his mind that he composed the rhyme of the ancient mariner. The two other poems dealing with supernatural elements were both left incomplete. One was the Cristobal and the other was Kubla Khan. So here in the first slide we'll learn about the newness that he brought into with in the existing cult of supernaturalism and how he maintained it. So before Coleridge, the supernatural element had entered into English literature, apart from in the drama, it was rather gross and was in, was in a very crude form. It had appeared in the works of Walpole, Mrs. Radcliffe and Monk Lewis, who introduced the supernatural element in a very crude form in their romances. They had tried to produce an atmosphere of mystery and horror by artificial devices like sudden transformations or noises and thunders and awful appearances. When Coleridge totally discarded such crudeness and the grossness, he gave an inward quality to his conception of the supernatural. He brought supernaturalism into intimate relation with individual experiences and gave a new psychological interest to it. The difference between Coleridge on one side and Walpole and, Ms. and Mrs. Radcliffe on the other is the difference between the maker of horror and the maker of horrors. Coleridge, Coleridge creates the atmosphere of mystery by indefiniteness and by a subtle suggestion while the other to employ crude descriptions and pile horrors in order to send a cold shiver down the, the reader's spine. So in their case, the supernaturalism is actually not enjoyed by the reader. The treatment of supernaturalism by the earlier writers was of objective kind. But in case of Coleridge, the treatment was a fine kind. The supernatural is brought in the line with subjective experiences. Thus, uh, Coleridge, even before he wrote the uh, rhyme of ancient Marina, laid stress upon three essential features of poems of supernatural class, which were the psychological interest, the dramatic truth, and reality of the supernatural. So the next thing we'll be studying about is how Coleridge explores the human psyche through supernaturalism. Well, the supernatural elements in Coleridge is neither a presentation of sorrow by external devices nor a mere exhibition of the effects of supernatural on human conduct and behavior, but it is an exploration of what we call as soul love. Well, soul love is the deepest emotion of a soul which is explored by the experience of supernatural. Secondly, the incidents and emotions arising from them are so full of human interest that they acquire a, a dramatic truth and produce a suspension of disbelief while consti while, which constitutes the poetic faith. 
It is only the dramatic truth of the mariner's emotions in the rhyme of ancient mariner that gives an air of reality to his weird ex experiences. Well, the supernatural in Coleridge appears to be very real, not objectively, but uh, on a psychological level. Reality does not consist merely in external appearances of things perceptible to the senses, but also in the deeper passions and experiences of the soul. So all his uh, three poems of, on supernatural, which, which are the rhyme of ancient mariner, Christabel and Kubla Khan, all of these have these main characters of supernaturalism, which appears to be very true and real. The secret of Coleridge's unique success work on the mind and not merely was on external objects. He played with the mind of reader. He knew with his psychological insight that the mysterious world of the supernatural must remain a mystery and that subtle suggestion only can produce this sense of mystery, not the psychological insight or the crude descriptions. It is with delicate touches of suggestions combined with the insight, he brings out all the shady or the shadowy mysteries of the unseen world. The art with which Coleridge excites supernaturalism and the wonders of supernatural produces an atmosphere of what Aristotle calls the higher illusion of reality. So thus, it is the human note in his poems dealing with supernatural that helps to create the sense of reality. So next we have imagination playing an important role in the supernatural elements. So Coleridge engaged himself in the inquiry into the quality by which the poetic imagination gives an air to the reality, to the marvelous. We discussed it in the similar, uh, the similar concept in the previous lesson that how Coleridge makes the supernatural look real by the dramatic truth and expo and exposing all the emotions and make appear really true in our eyes. He adds sense of actuality and substance, but we, we I forgot to mention and I'll mention it here. He has a very dreamy quality that he meant that he portrays in his work. The mystery, the strangeness, the weirdness of the supernatural. They cast a spell on a dreamy imagination of Coleridge, so on us. Poet clings to the memory with peculiar tenacity of dreams and thus he conveys the same in the same intensity to us. So after this dreamy quality and the supernaturalism in, this, in his imagination, we'll study about the blend of natural and supernatural in his works. Coleridge has blended the supernatural and natural phenomena so skillfully and successfully that no reader can draw a line of demarcation between the two. Not a single reader can differentiate or can say that here is the natural aspect that ends and the supernatural begins. It is divided in a very thin line and nobody can actually figure it out. At the same time, the poet presents his supernatural phenomena so that the supernatural world becomes a reality. The poet invests his tales with a human interest and a semblance of truth and consequently produces a willing suspension of disbelief for the moment in the reader's mind. The fantastic and the real, the human and the supernatural, the probable and the improbable are so well lit that the total effect is one of realism. The transition from the natural to supernatural and vice versa is so well and so dexterously managed that the reader is hardly conscious of it. The ancient mariner is one of those masterpieces of vivid descriptions. He also employs the similes which are familiar and natural in the supernatural aura which makes it which makes his work even more attractive so we'll next come to the suggestiveness one of the most effective methods used by the poet to make his stories look real was that of infinite suggestiveness he deliberately leaves many things in the supernatural tales vague and indefinite 
He gives the picture in broad outlines so that the details may be filled in by the reader himself according to his own temperament. He never brings the supernatural element abruptly, but rather than he makes gradual introduction of the supernatural in the plot. So thus the path he pursues so as to create the horror in his readers is completely indirect. He first wins the confidence by, by mentioning minute details about the plot, about the supernatural element and then introduces the elements in the, re in the plot so that the reader would accept it and it would look really real to the reader. So this was how he gradually builds up the supernatural elements in his plot. So lastly, the supernaturalism of Coleridge's poems is no matter of stage lighting as the monk Lewis or of off-stage accessories such as in Scott. It is an atmosphere that fuses the entire tale. The outcome of a hundred delicate touches and subtle hints made convincing to the reader by profound psychological insight of the poet. Coleridge lays the scenery of such poems as the, an the ancient Mariner and Christabel in midst of untraveled seas and the deep forests of romance. It is supernatural, but of the ancient, common, simple kind which belongs to all mankind. So while concluding, I would say that we find nothing unnatural in the supernatural dread conveyed in, he in his lines, like, like one that on the lonesome road doth walk in fear and dread. So this was all in the lesson about the supernaturalism in, and the treatment of supernaturalism in Coleridge's work. I hope you got the entire idea of how he writes and what are his methods of writing. If you have any questions, do post and read it and keep following me on an academy. Thank you.